And just stand by for generally. Oh, there's Donovan. He's on. Ooh, we have a house full now. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone showed up for David Beach tonight. Yeah. Yes. No pressure, David. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> see, All right. Hey, Donovan. Hey, guys. So it looks like it looks hey, like the agenda filled, Olivia. I think so. I'm not missing. Do we have a counter? Oh, yes, that's Cheyenne. Okay. I'm not missing anything on my end. Unless we have an education overview or something like that or an award. But. We, we actually do. We have an education overview. Um, I'm just going to give a quick introduction to Wes and I's meeting. Um, Wes and I met in Pasco last week and we had lunch together and we talked about some you know club goals and club business and um i was hoping that wes could you know for the education overview tonight at the end you know kind of just go over as our club coach what he explained to me because he definitely knows it better than i do in a little bit more detail and i think it would be really good for all the club to hear and he's got some some really good ideas for us to kind of reach some of these milestones before the end of june and uh, that way, um, you know, we can, I think, uh, you know, reach this distinguished club status. So uh, that will be at the end uh, from, from Wes. So with that, we will go ahead and begin the meeting at 648. Uh, before we go any further, uh, Donovan, could you please lead us in the invocation and pledge? Yeah, yeah, of course. First, I'd like to go ahead and say, a quote by Tony Robbins. To effectively communicate, we must realize that we are all different in the way we perceive the world and use this understanding as a guide to our communication with others. Then I would like to go ahead and say the um, pledge if anyone would like to join. Um, sorry. Um, uh, sorry, I forgot it. Um, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Public. For which it stands, one, one nation, under, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Donovan, I, I appreciate that. And I enjoyed your quote that you said at the beginning. Um, so thank you very much for doing that. We also have you down as a general evaluator tonight. And... Um, and so you'll, you'll, you'll definitely have another role here coming up in the meeting. All right. So I just have three things for club business. One, I already passed. You know, I just want to tell everybody about Wes and I's meeting. And uh, it was really good to meet him in person and sit down and have some lunch. And I look forward to him explaining to the club, you know, what we talked about during our meeting. So I got good news about the hybrid meeting. So I haven't talked to the pastor yet, but I called again, and then I spoke to Rick Salmon, and he spoke to some of the uh, people in the front office while the pastor's away, and it sounds like we do have a go at this church. So I don't think it's going to be at the church as expected, but I guess they have a building right down from the church or something like that that we are going to be able to use. And basically, we're just waiting right now for the pastor to get back and then contact me and we make plans and set up and go from there. So hopefully, maybe next Monday could be our first hybrid meeting. And so I'll keep everybody posted with that. I'm going to reach out back out to the pastor on Wednesday if I haven't heard from him and uh, try to try to try to get this going. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I, go ahead. I, I think it's. Government Street Baptist, and it's right downtown off of uh, I-65. Um, trying to think what it's near. I think it's somewhat near airport, but it's right there in that general area. And I believe it's Government Street Baptist Church. Well, that, that won't be downtown, though. 
It's on the other side of where the Chick-fil-A is on Dolphin Street. I, I mean, wait, Government Street. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. That's wrong. It's um, in that right by the interstate, like on the other side of where the little shopping center is, like it's on, it's near there. Yeah, I, I pulled it up on the map and I haven't looked at it in probably two weeks. Uh, Cheyenne is right. It's off I-65. I just know it's somewhere in the general area, uh, I guess, of, of, of the, the, service, the service road, the service road off to the government um, street, government boulevard exit. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. And so look, we'll, we'll, you know, use this church as necessary. And then hopefully I think Carpe Diem was kind of working for everybody. And hopefully when they start to open back up, we can get back in. I normally call them monthly, but I haven't called them probably in over a month now to ask. And so I, I can do that going forward. And lastly, before we get started here, because I know we got a, a, a good speech tonight and an education overview, so I don't want to hold up the meeting. Uh, meeting minutes. Olivia sent me some meeting minutes. I did send it to, um, I will be sending them out tomorrow for everybody to view and then we can vote on next uh, next meeting. And with that, that's all I have. Does anybody have any club business to pass? Uh, Carrie? Not really uh, club business, but uh, um, I like to... <laughs> I'd like to have uh, two more weeks to prepare the pre uh, speech for me. So not next week, but uh, in two weeks from today. Perfect, thank you. And we're, we're gonna have Wes uh, speaking next week, giving a, a level two speech. And we'll have Carrie the following week. And hopefully we can get uh, myself or somebody else in to fill some of these gaps that Wes will go over tonight. All right, with that, I will turn over the meeting to our Toastmaster for tonight. That is Olivia. Hello, good evening, everyone. Hey. Toastmasters, honored guests, friends, family, whatever we're going to call ourselves tonight. I have the privilege of being your Toastmaster for this evening. And in that role, I will be discussing, I'll go over the meeting. And then I will also discuss the three parts of the meeting that we have. So the first part of the meeting will be our prepared speeches. And tonight we have one extended speech so that will cover both of those roles. Secondly, we will have our table topics portion where everyone will have an opportunity to do a one to two minute impromptu speech. Uh, followed by our evaluations. I will call on a general evaluator, evaluator and then the evaluator will call on the team to give their um, reports. So with that being said, I would like to have the team introduce themselves. So tonight, let's start with our general evaluator. What is that role? And general evaluator is being held by Donovan. Can you talk to us about general evaluator, please? Yes, Mrs. Tim, um, Mrs. Postmaster. So my role as a general evaluator is to keep track of how the meeting went as a whole. And I will also call on my team of evaluators in the third section of the meeting. Okay. Back to you, um, Mrs. Toastmaster. Thank you very much. Next, we would uh, let's talk to our timer. Cheyenne, what is your role tonight? Hi, everyone. I'll be the timer, and I will be timing the speeches, the uh, main speech presented, and also our table topics. And I will be indicating your time do it with some art supplies that we have here mm -hmm. so we'll do a gr <laughs> green with the acrylic paint for letting you know you've reached the minimum time yellow letting you know you're approaching the maximum time and then the red will indicate that you have reached the maximum time and try to wrap it up soon after that mm -hmm. and then i will give my report at the end thank you but very good. Thank you very much for that. And since you're already off mute, Luke, don't you touch that button. <laughs> I'm not Luke. I'm sorry. Kyler. Kyler, not Luke. Give me your grammarian report, please, and also the word of the day. All right. Um, 
Let me see real quick. I forgot to double check the word of the day, but I'll start off with saying I'll be the grammarian. Um, I'll be the grammarian this evening, and the um, my my role will be to listen to everyone and look for any abuses of the English language. Uh, not very many of us abuse the English language. We always use very uh, you know clean, concise English. Um, almost to the point of like, it kind of makes you wonder like, what is an abuse of the English language? Um, an abuse of an English language would be a case where you're using double negatives or if you're someone like me, you're reverting to your Southern accent and you're saying there ain't none of that over there, you know, using those double negatives and using shortened words and slang words. Uh, we want to sound as good and clean and precise as we can so that we can have a wide audience understand this clearly. The word of the day is eclectic, and um, that is deriving ideas, style, or taste from a broad or diverse range of sources. Um, used as an example, universities offer an eclectic mix of courses. Um, some people have an eclectic style. They like to wear a lot of different things inspired by a lot of different stuff. Um, David Bowie had some eclectic influences, which made his music unique. So with that, that is my role as the timer. So I turn it back to you, Olivia. OK, thank you very much for that, Kyler. And let's talk to our all counter, Maurice. Yes, fellow Toastmasters. I will be the all counter for tonight. And my responsibility is counting the ahs. In other words, back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Okay, thank you very much. And Carrie, you're going to be our table topic master. Could you tell us a little bit about your role tonight, please? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, my role is table topic master. The table topic master delivers a second portion of the meeting, which helps train members to quickly organize and express their thoughts in an impromptu setting. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think I have everyone's role covered. So let's see. I think so. I think I've covered everyone's role tonight. OK, very good. I'm going to challenge everyone to use the word of the day at least two times, eclectic. Uh, the definition is in the chat. So please try to use it at least two times today. And I will turn the lecture over to our prepared speech, which is David Roberts. And his speech is entitled, The Right Way to Speak. David, it's on you. Thank you, Mr. Mrs. Toastmaster, Madam Toastmaster. This will be like a keynote speech as if I'm at a conference giving a keynote speech. So greetings, everyone, and welcome to the conference. I am David Roberts and will be your keynote speaker. I'm excited to be here. This conference has been prompted by recent events. There are so many eclectic views in the world today, and so many people don't get along with each other. We have decided that we should have a conference and try to get to the bottom of this and come up with better ways to speak. I'll tell you a story. In my early days as a civil engineer, there was a project one time. I worked on a computer designing roadways. And because of some political events that happened, we, we also had consultants, private parties doing work for us. But because of some political events, I was forced to swap projects with a private party. So I gave them the project I was in the middle of, and they gave me their project. Now, this is computer stuff, so we have different file systems, different ways of doing things. It was a mess. It did not work very well at all, but they insisted we do it. They had a big board meeting where they were going over what all we were going to do, and I decided at that time I was going to stand up and explain to them just how stupid they were. So I stood up and in not the nicest terms, explained to them that this was a waste of taxpayer dollars, that this is not going to work. We needed to go back to the way we were doing it and let me finish my project and let the consultant finish his. 
Well, the bosses, the head bosses that were there, they thought about what I said and they decided, you know, engineer David is right. No, they did it. I almost got fired. I got in so much trouble for that. And the reason is I did not know the right way to speak. And when I talk about the right way to speak, I'm talking about how we communicate, not just verbally, but also written and even body language. If you ask me to do something for you and I say, sure, I'll do it, but I'm like, my body language is telling you, yeah, he doesn't really want to do it. Communication, the right way to speak encompasses all of that. Sama Vaka. Sama Vaka. That is a phrase from the ancient language of Buddhism, and it translates to right speech. It's all about how we should speak correctly and in a way to enhance relationships. Now, Buddhism doesn't, is, is not unique at all to Buddhism. It's also taught in Christianity. Throughout the Bible, there's many phrases about how we should treat one another, how we speak to one another. There's even the ninth commandment, which says, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And aside from religious views, even as a humanist views, secular views, there are the search for truth, trying to do the right thing, the right way to speak. I volunteered to be your keynote speaker because this is something I struggle with, and I want to share my experiences and my progress. So tonight, I'm going to talk about, first, what is not the right way to speak. And I might just shorten that to right speech, but I'm going to talk about what is not right speech. Then I'm going to talk about what is right speech, what is truth, what is lying. Is misleading okay? Mm, no. And also, what about just not communicating at all? I mean, if communication is causing so many problems in the world, maybe we just shouldn't communicate. Okay, first, there are four things that are not right speech. First, lying. Duh. Well, everybody knows lying is wrong. But the thing is, sometimes the truth you know, there's different versions of the truth, what I believe to be true and what someone else believes to be true could be different. However, deliberately lying or slanting my views to try to gain favor in something, that is always wrong. It's wrong because it hurts other people and it hurts myself because eventually I grow to where I don't know what the truth is anymore. So number one, what is not right speech is lying. Number two is divisive speech. That is speaking to cause controversy. And we've all seen these people, button pushers. It's like, I know how to get this person riled up. I'm going to push their button. You see it on the internet. They're called trollers. I'm going to, somebody post an inflammatory statement just to get a reaction. Divisive speech is wrong. And it's, it can be an addictive behavior. Now, this doesn't mean that I shouldn't speak on controversial subjects. To the contrary, I think it's important to speak on controversial subjects, but it needs to be done in the right way and with respect and with an intention to, to grow my knowledge. The third thing that is not right speech is harsh speech, uttering words designed to hurt and upset, punishing the other person. I'll give you an example back in my early days of driving. Sometimes I would be driving along, minding my own business, and someone just cuts me off. They just pull into my lane. I would communicate with them with my horn. And I would also, as Toastmasters taught me, I would use gestures. Not, I, I would gesture at them and I would yell and scream. Not a single time was that effective. At no time did any of those people say, oh, you're right. You, know, you should blow your horn at me. I, I've learned. And it, it didn't help them. And it did not help me. It hurt both of us. Harsh speech accomplishes nothing. The fourth thing that is not right speech is meaningless speech. This one's a little tricky. It's fine to have small talk and kid around. That's all well and good. But 
and as if you're in Toastmasters, you've learned about filler words, why silence is sometimes important. But beyond that, silence can be a very effective means of communication. And silence is a time for us to process our thoughts. But in some instances, when people are just in an avoidance mode, they'll just continue to talk about whatever because they don't want to deal with the real subject. And that's what's meant by meaningless speech. So that's four things that are not right speech, lying, divisive speech, harsh speech, and meaningless speech. So what is right speech, David? Right speech is first speaking at the appropriate time. And by that, I mean not speaking if I'm upset or just learned something and I can't process it, or if the person I wanna to talk to, I know they're upset. Waiting for the appropriate time is the first part of right speech. The second part is speaking in truth as best I can, speak the truth, and speaking affectionately and beneficially. The key is it is speaking with a mind of goodwill. And if you don't take anything else away from this conference, remember this, speaking with a mind of goodwill. If I do that, things will always work out saying nothing to hurt others. Truth. I talked a little bit about truth. What is truth? The way I look at it for myself is this. I'm a professional civil engineer. I am registered to practice engineering in the state of Alabama. I'm also 57 years old. I've been around the block. I've learned a lot of things. I know a lot. But let's take the sum knowledge of everything I, uh, I know and represent it by this gap. This is everything that David Roberts knows. There's this. Then there's the things that I don't know, but I'm aware that I don't know them. I know I don't know these things. Okay, it's huge, it's monstrous. But there's a third category. There are the things that I don't know that I don't even know I don't know. And that's everything, that's the universe. There are so many things in life that I don't even have an inkling of understanding. So when I speak the truth, I try to remember that, you know, this is what I really know. And that leads me into the next thing I want to talk about, which is bias. The best example of bias I can think of is there's a story about a group of blind men that are taken to an elephant to examine. The blind man, the first man is feeling the elephant's trunk and he's like, okay, this is a big, strong, fat snake. It's all wiggly. The next man is feeling the tusk and he's like, okay, this is a spear. The third man is feeling the trunk of the elephant. And he's thinking, oh, this is a tree. And the third, the fourth man is feeling the tail and he's, this is a whip. Later, all the blind men are asked to describe what they felt, what they sensed. And they all accurately described what they were sensing, but none of them described what they really were feeling, which was an elephant. So bias, I try to remember that I, my views are sometimes so narrow that there's so much out there that I am not experienced with. So when I speak, I try to speak with this understanding. I have a cheat sheet. The next thing I want to talk about is lying. Now, deliberately lying is obvious, and I think everyone will agree that that's not a good thing. That's not a good way to communicate. But there's also other forms of lying, and the most important other form to me is lying by omission, omitting the truth. I'll give an example of this. When I was a civil engineer again and working on a project, we always had deadlines, and our boss would sometimes come in and ask me questions trying to ascertain when a project would be completed. Well, I would accurately answer the specific questions asked from, you know, from me. But sometimes I knew that there was other information he should have asked that were going to affect the deadline of this project. 
but he didn't ask it. So I didn't answer him. I didn't tell him. Yeah, there was critical information he needed to know that I knew, but I did not relay that to him. Technically, maybe I didn't lie because he didn't ask, but really omission of the truth is the same result. And if it's the same result in all form, it's, it's a lie as well in this, from the viewpoint that I have. How about misleading? What if I just mislead somebody a little bit? That's not a lie, right? That's, that's speaking the truth. I'll give you an example of this. This is a true story. Earlier in my career, there was a young engineer. I'll call him Randy. That may or may not be his real name. He lived with his mom. And these were, Randy was a great guy, really good strong, Christian, loving guy. And so was his mom. And they took a vow that they would never tell a lie. Well, there was this girl that liked Randy. But Randy didn't really like her. So this is before the days of cell phones. They had a landline phone, but they had caller ID. So when the girl would call to speak to Randy, when they would see her number on the caller ID, Randy told me he would run out the front door onto the front steps. Then his mom, when she answered the phone, the girl would say, can I speak to Randy? His mom said, I'm sorry, he stepped out. I took Randy, I sat him down. I said, Randy, you and your mom were lying. Even if it was technically the truth, it's the intention that's important here. And at first, Randy is like, no, we weren't. But then he thought about it and he's like, yeah, you're right. We were lying. Now, when I heard that story, and that is a true story. When I heard that story, I thought that is so, so silly. But then I got to thinking, how many times have I done that? Maybe a more sophisticated version of that, but how many times have I misled someone because I didn't really want to go somewhere or wanted to get out of doing something? Yeah, I've done that a lot. And, and I'm really glad Randy told me that story because as simple as it was, it made me reflect upon myself and realize, yeah, I'm that way too. And that leads me to a final thing about this is silence. We talked earlier about meaningless speech, how that's a bad thing, how silence is good. Silence or avoiding communication is not always good. In the situation with Randy and the girl, if instead of hiding from her phone calls, if he had simply taken the call and talked to her and explained to her in as nice and gentle way as he could that he just wasn't interested in her the way she was interested in him, that would have hurt her initially, but then she could have moved on with her life. She wouldn't have been misled into thinking there was something there maybe that there wasn't. Silence to avoid a situation, to avoid something that needs to be talked about it can do great harm as well. I know what you're thinking here. Okay, Mr. David Engineer, maybe we should call you Pollyanna. Maybe we should, because you're looking at the world as a, you know, the perfect world, the way it should be. This is more fantasy land. This is not the real world. And if you're thinking that, you're right, it's not. And I don't have answers for this. There are many things in the world that are not the way they should be, but that's the way the world seems to work. In doing this talk, I researched an article. Uh, a, a, I watched a video of a talk by a law professor. His name is James Dewan. He gave a talk. It's on the internet if you want to search on YouTube. It's, it's a very famous talk. It's called Don't Talk to the Police. Don't Talk to the Police. And I... I know there's a lot of controversy regarding the police today, but I know the, the. I think everyone will admit that the police are a very necessary component in society. If you think the driving on the roads are hard now, imagine if there were no police at all, how people would drive. And 
police are very necessary. But his point was, as a law professor, that if we are ever taken into custody for any reason and read Miranda rights, and they, Miranda rights, they say you, know, you have the right to remain silent. He said, always say, yes, I don't want to talk to you. And I thought at first, this is, this is not good because you know, we want to clear things up. That's, you know, it, we should try to get to the bottom of problems in life. But his point was that the police, as an interrogator or interviewer, they are allowed to do anything they want to obtain the information they're looking for. And as a result of that, although I think they had good in, intentions, in some cases, people under duress of an interview will say things that are wrong, and then later on, they're they're caught in that and it's recorded and there's they're said to be in a lie and there have been convictions of these things and we've all seen on tv recently people that were exonerated from dna evidence where it turned out that this person definitely did not do it but then in the interview he said he did or he said something to that effect the reason is when they ask him or her is i was I just didn't, I, I just wanted to get out of the interview. I, I don't remember even what I was saying, but I was just, I was so scared. And then this law professor brought up the Fifth Amendment, the right to remain silent. And that's what the Miranda rights are based on, the Fifth Amendment. Now, when I've heard about the Fifth Amendment, I always thought to myself, and I think a lot of people agree, that that's just some silly amendment that was made so guilty people don't have to confess to their crimes. But he pointed out, no, that's not the reason for the amendment. The reason is, is to protect innocent people from being misled or mistreated by the government, by the police. And the, Moran the Fifth Amendment is actually a very powerful and good thing. But I don't like this. I don't like it at all. It's, it seems like it's wrong speech, and, but I don't have an answer to that. It's but that's something that I did research. Another thing is obviously is advertisements. We've all seen advertisements all day long on the internet or TV. And to me, they're all intended to mislead, to, to, to drive us to do something. This is never the whole story. So, so the real world is different and I do, do acknowledge that. But I think in my heart, you know, when I speak with a clear mind when I try to speak from a from a point of view of, of truthfulness that the things do work out better. So to summarize, I've talked about first what's what right speech is not. It is not lying or being divisive or harsh or meaningless speech. I've talked about what it is, which is speaking from a mind of goodwill. It's that simple. And talked about what truth is, what lying is, is misleading okay, maybe we shouldn't communicate at all, and what about the real world? I've talked about all those things, and you can draw your own conclusions, but imagine a world where only right speech occurred, where everybody spoke the right way. There would be no more wars. Divorce lawyers would have to find a new line of work, there would never be another Twitter or Facebook fight. We've all seen those, you know, post this and the other person post this, and then it's just, ah. And with all, more importantly, with all of this improper speech out of the way, then there is time for real and necessary communications. It would be a magical place if we could all speak to each other from our heart and in truthfulness. But as I said in the beginning, I struggle with this. There have been times where I want to hurt people with improper speech. And back to that lead story that I started with when the consultant and I were forced to switch projects. Imagine instead of just blowing up at my bosses, if I had at the right time sat down with them and gently explained my viewpoints and my reasoning. Okay, yeah, they, they still weren't going to change their mind. However, our relationship could have grown and we could have forged forward a better path and perhaps in the future things would have would have come out better the right way to speak something to think about madam toastmaster
beautiful. Thank you, David, so much. I tell you what, I was tired tonight and I was thinking that I was going to just skip out, but I remembered that you had the speech that you were, that you wanted us to um, hear before you do it, because you are going to you are going to give the speech. I'm assuming to a at a conference, a real conference, correct? I mean, I've done something similar at the meditation center, uh, speaking like we give wisdom talks. So I've done things like that mm -hmm. with it. Thanks. Okay. All right. Well, you did a great job and I'm so glad that I did not miss it. I know I am not your evaluator, but if we have time at the end, I would love to give you just a little bit of my feedback. I was really intrigued by it and it was very interesting. It kept my attention the whole time. And I was kind of wondering, uh-oh, am I going to, you know, because it's just so easy for us to do in the world in which we live in now where everything is 15 seconds or 60 seconds, you know, and then it's over with like TikTok or Instagram. And so uh, sometimes our minds have gotten to the point where we can't stay focused for longer periods, but your speech was very interesting. And I enjoyed it all the way. Okay, with that out of the way, we're gonna move into our next, well, I shouldn't say out of the way, with that portion of the meeting done, very good. We're gonna move into our table topics portion where everyone will have opportunity to participate. And our table topics master is Carrie. Carrie, come on up. Good evening, everyone again. Today's top table topic is related to weather. The weather in May in Mobile varies from day to day, or even hours to hours, like this morning, with bad weather, but in the afternoon, cooling up. We never predict it. We cannot predict it, especially in this month. The questions are about weather phases. Tonight, we will create eclectic definitions of the phrases. Use your imagination and be creative. First, under the weather. This morning, I felt under the weather, I guess all of us. What about beside the weather? How would you define beside the weather? How would you feel when you feel beside the weather? Again, be creative. Anyone? I'll take it. Okay, Olivia, please. I think the question is creatively explain what it means to be beside the weather. So my response to that, fellow Toastmasters, what does it mean to be beside the weather? I know sometimes I have been known to have an eclectic view. And I like the definition that was used tonight for eclectic view because it just means elements from various sources. So, but when I think about weather, of course we have so many different types of weather. But when I think about being beside the weather, I think of the weather as being the wind almost beneath my wings or maybe next to me, maybe the force that behinds me to keep me pushing. Or sometimes like David taught us, when we need to be careful what we say, maybe that that the weather beside me can be that force in front of me that says, hush, Olivia, you're about to say the wrong thing. But because I feel like the weather is, I, how do I say, divinely provided, and no man can control the weather, so it's beyond our scope. So I feel like whatever is occurring with the weather, if I can just allow it to take me where I, where it chooses, then it will be for my betterment. So to be aside or on the side of the weather makes me smile as if I am relinquishing control to a higher power. So I like being beside the weather, especially if it's a nice, cool, breezy wind. Back to you, Table Topic Master. Thank you, Olivia. That's a very creative, yes. I never thought you would turn to more positive way, actually. Thank you so much. Next. We all, we should know this phrase. Raining cats and dogs. I'm, I'm pretty sure all of us know the definition. But what about the raining horses and deer? How would you define the phrase? And what, what kind of summer, what, what kind of summer days would you say? I'm, I'm sorry, just uh, raining cats and dogs and a horse and um, um, 
let me start over. I just confused. Okay. When raining cats and dogs, what about the raining horses and deer? How would you define the phrase and describe it? Majid, please. Hey, hello, uh, friends. This is Majid. The question asked is we have, we know rainy dog and cat. How about rainy horse and deer? So that's a, an eclectic uh, point of view of uh, gathering all thoughts. So I would relate it as being in urban environment, we just see cats and dogs and raining cat and dog is like we see it right now in mobile is you see the seven days forecast for mobile, rain, 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 too much rain, too, too much rain. So raining cat and dog. So we, we use it as, right? So for us urban people, that that's all our wildest thought is, oh, it's raining left and right, raining cat and dog. So I would see if, a rural kind of scenario where the people have more horses and deers like on nature friendly environment like in a farm or in a forest so it would be raining horse and deer would describe the same scenario in a in a more rural kind of uh, area so it's it's a it's a eclectic view of how they say it like we say it, raining cat and dog, uh, raining, uh, raining cat and dog, and they would say raining horse and deer, still meaning like it's raining left and right, um, but their visual is more horse and deer. That's where they live with, we live with this, they live with that. So they, they use their terms to describe the same thing. Back to you, madam, uh, table topic master. Thank you, Majid. I think it's a kind of hard for you probably, or for even for me. A horse and dog, where is this idea from? Is horse and dogs, it's a we in Japanese, something not clear, something not beautiful, something a little stupid. And that's a horse and dog, we said. So that's why I, I like to know that what other people, besides not the Japanese people, would think about the horses and deer. Thank you so much, Majid. Next question is dark, dark days of summer. And this describes the mobile summer, I guess. And what about cat days of summer? What kind of summer days would you say? Cat days of summer. Anyone? Kyra, please. Hey, so when I, greetings fellow Toastmaster and honor guests. Growing up, I heard a lot of these phrases, um, especially people saying like, man, it's the dog days of summer out there. Like you just, you don't even want to go out there. You just want to stay inside and find some air conditioning. Um, when I hear dog days of summer, like I'm thinking like it's humid, it's hot, you know, everybody's sweaty, smells bad. It's just absolutely miserable. Um, kind of think of like a, like a, like a wet dog almost, you know, it's like normally summer is a good thing, but then, you know, like dogs are a great thing. But then when you, when you meet like a wet dog, you're just kind of like, oh, like just get away. Like, you know, um, so when you say cat days of summer, I try to think of like, you know, what are the, what makes me think of a cat and cats are typically kind of like uh, unpredictable, kind of random. Uh, you never really know how they're going to feel about you, or what they're going to do. So that makes me, especially in Mobile, that makes me think of days when you wake up in the morning, it's nice and cool, and then all of a sudden 10 o'clock hits and there's a massive thunderstorm. And then all of a sudden at, by about two o'clock, it's a beautiful day again. And then four o'clock, it's cold. And then you know, five o'clock, it's hot again. So I imagine the cat days of summer would be like that. You just, you don't know what to expect out of them. Um, whereas the really dog days are a little more consistent. So, <laughs> so that would be my definition. Uh, it may be a little eclectic, uh, but I would take my, um, <laughs> take my influences from just uh, old, old time Southerners that I've known growing up. So back, back to you, Carrie. Thank you, Kyla. I really like it. Yes, cats are sometimes unpredictable. And dogs are vegan. We, I, I like dogs better, by the way. <laughs> and it's really good. It's very good to describe the cat as a, some unpredictable dog, uh, animal. 
about mobile weather is very unpredictable. That's so true. Thank you so much. Do we still have a time? Mom, not two more. It's 7.32. Yeah, I think we got time for one more, Carrie. Okay. okay. okay this is the last one. Heading the clouds. I like to have my head in the cloud sometimes. What about the feet in the cloud? Your feet are in the cloud. Please describe it. Okay, Donovan, please. Thank you, Kiri, and honored guests. The question I have given was, what does it mean to have your feet in the clouds? To me, it's sort of like a, those different eclectic views on how you would say it or how you would define it. So the way that I would define it is that understanding that the feet is the opposite of the head. And to me, it's like, you know, sometimes you have those days that you have opposite days, that it just doesn't feel like you're not yourself. You feel like more of another person. And sometimes that's good, sometimes it's not. To me, it's symbolic, but it's also a way of thinking outside of the box. By thinking outside of the box, it kind of helps you to be able to get the different views and prospects of different things. So my intro to this question is that it's the opposite. It's feet is the opposite of the head. And sometimes people have those opposite days that they don't feel, feel themselves. And most people would, think, would feel that way, mostly in the morning, more than in the afternoon because of, uh, you know, the bad feeling of it, like, oh, it's Monday morning. Let's just get this over with. But let's just, I would like to conclude to say that sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. And I also want to end by saying Mondays are great. Thank you. Back to you, Kiri. Thank you so much, Donovan. Your answer is very logical. It sounds logic, reasonable. And I like the head tweet is the opposite of head, absolutely. So it's outside, not inside. It's, it's really logical. I like that. And actually, I never thought my question turned into such a philosophical. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now back to uh, Toastmaster, Madame Toastmaster Olivia. Thank you, thank you, Carrie. We really, I really enjoyed those questions. As a matter of fact, I wanted to answer all of them, and I was like, "Put your hand down, Olivia. You already had your chance." But I liked all of those feet in the clouds. They almost made me feel like I was floating somewhere. And the horses and deer. I was thinking about being out west, maybe in the early 1900s, when you saw those animals just running around. And I was thinking, wow, how heavy that would be if a horse was to rain on you. So I was thinking about heavy weather, maybe heavy rain or something. But anyway, I really enjoyed all those questions. We're not going to uh, take up any more time. So we're going to move on to our next portion is where we go into our evaluations. I would like to bring up our general evaluator and so they can call on the rest of the evaluations. So general evaluation. Evaluator is Donovan. If you would, come on to the lectern. All right, thank you. First, I'd like to go ahead and say that the meaning 
Um, but smoothly, we stole that 650. We did have a three minute research that I believe, think it might be a little bit more than that because I came out a little late. But overall, it was a great meeting. Now I'd like to go ahead and call on my evaluation team. First, I'd like to call on the first evaluator, which is Wes, I believe. This is a general evaluator. The purpose of, of David's project was to practice developing and presenting a longer speech. Now, he, he did that very, very well done. It was a very, very well presented speech. The delivery was to be engaging, uh, an engaging keynote style. It was very engaging from start to finish. Maybe humorous, informational, or, or, or any style. It was, it was definitely an infor, informational style predominantly, but there were some humorous elements to it and also some thought provoking elements to it. So it, it was a very good blend throughout the entire presentation. David demonstrated excellent presentation skills and compelling content. When I, when I look at evaluation, I consider three things, presence, preparation, and projection. David had a really had a commanding presence in his presentation. He's very well prepared. And his projection was very well done. I always have trouble reading my note or discovering my notes. He presented us with some interesting lessons learned throughout the throughout the presentation. He was, it was the, the, the presentation and the lessons learned and the thought-provoking elements were cleverly intermined, I thought. This is, he gave us four ways, four ways of, of, of four wrong ways of, present, of giving a presentation, lying, divisive speech, harsh speech, and meaningless speech. I'm a docent at the World War II Museum, but in our docent training, our trainer said, there, remember, there, there, there are those who have something to say. There are those who have to say something. I think it's more important to have something to say as opposed to just saying something for the sake of saying something. Then, he gave, then David pointed out right ways of speech, appropriate, appropriate, Appropriateness, truth, goodwill. Went to to uh, elements of bias and well, we, we brought up elements of bias, lying by emission and misleading pitfalls that we need to look out for. Uh, there was no. There wasn't any res resolution, but then there, but there wasn't intended to be a resolution. There were, there were elements that he presented that we can think about on our individually. But I think, I think the speech was, was very well done. It was, you had your, your, you were very clear in your, in your, in your speaking. You had very good vocal authority. You used the word of the day, your diction was, very well done. Excellent eye contact. Excellent eye contact. Very good, effective use of gestures. I checked the audience. The audience was very engaged and very aware of, of what you were presenting. You have a very good comfort level in your presentation. Admirable, admirably so. One thing I would suggest in terms of uh, in, in, in ways to improve, or one thing that you might want to work on, is when you give a presentation, and when we, when we give 
presentations, we, in Zoom environments, we have a tendency to be relaxed, which is fine. But remember, not all our presentations are always going to be in the Zoom environment. So I would suggest that when you do give a presentation, even if it's a zoo, in a Zoom environment, to give a jet to stand, to stand, give gestures, come forward for illustrate points, may come forward to make a point or move to side to side if, if possible. But in, in, in just stand to give your presentation as you would in a, in a, I would say normal speaking environment. But I thought the speech was very well done and I thank you for it. Very informative and very well done. Thank you, David. Thank you, Wes. Okay, the next evaluator, I would like to go ahead and hand the back to us, Maurice, which is a, who is the all council. Maurice, will you please give me your report? All right, fellow Toastmasters, I am about to present the all counter report. I had a filler word at the very beginning before things got really started. Kyler had a few filler words when he was presenting his role, and then a few during his table topics. Uh, from David's speech, all I caught was one you know that I can remember. Olivia, she had one ah, one you know, and a couple so's. And Majid had a few ahs. Donovan had a you know and one ah. Carrie, at the end of presenting the table topics, she had an ah. And I believe I caught one from Wes also. So that's my all counter report. Thank you, Maurice. The next, if I would like to go ahead and call upon as Kylo is the Grammarian. Kylo, would you give your report, please? Sure. Greetings, fellow Toastmasters. So as far as uh, abuse of the English language goes, we did we did a great job. I didn't hear didn't catch any abuse of the English language as usual. And then as far as the word of the day goes, um, I think this may this is definitely better than average. It looks like ev almost everybody I think has used it. Donovan used it. Um, Majid used it. Olivia used it twice. Carrie used it. David used it. Um, and I used it. And I'm, I might be missing somebody. I think Maurice used it uh, as well. Um, or Olivia's saying no. <laughs> okay, so, well, I think we did pretty good. Um, <laughs> maybe not. Okay, well, either way, I think we did really well with our use of the uh, English language. Um, I mean, sorry, with our use of the, the word of the day. So good job, everybody. Pat yourself on the back. Let's try to do that more often because the the word of the day is something that, that I know I forget. And I think sometimes other people forget it too. So just, let's, get, let's keep up that momentum. Uh, back to you, General Evaluator. Thank you, Kylo. So I'm going to go ahead and release the lectern back to you, but I'd like to call upon Cheyenne for the timeless report, please. Okay. Thank you, Donovan. All right, I have the time of our speeches this evening. David, your speech was 21 minutes and 40 seconds. That's all for our speeches, for our table topics. Olivia, you had one minute and 22 seconds. Majid, you had one minute and 45 seconds. Kyler, you had one minute and 47 seconds. And Donovan, you had two minutes and 30 seconds. And that is all, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your um, evaluation. And I just want to go ahead and 
applaud David that you did a good job. Very interesting and very understandable that I could hear. Now I'm going to go ahead and relinquish the lectern back to Olivia, who is the Toastmaster of the night. Thank you all and have a good evening. Thank you, Donovan, for your general evaluation. And I know we are out of time. Did we? Did, you had an education overview as well, right, Luke? Um, yes, I want to be respectful okay. of everybody's time. And so I'm hoping, uh, Wes, um, if uh, everybody's okay with it, like Wes, just to kind of brief us on uh, on his and I meeting, if, if you guys are good with that, probably take three to five minutes. Mm -hmm. Sure thing. When I, I, when we went over, it was a copy of the dashboards, copy of the Hilltoppers dashboard element. And it's, I have to admit, it's still a little confusing to me. I, I tried, uh, but but to get it for, it's just for distinguished, we need five goals to be met. Um, when I interpret, uh, I'm not 100% clear on this. This is, uh, I, I tried to get uh, someone more knowledgeable to join us and uh, who's more familiar with this. He tried to explain it to me over the phone, yet, for phone today, but we had a bad connection. But from what I understand, we need four level, level ones, three level two, two level threes, and about seven new members. But for one thing, I did contact Toastmasters International and the speeches that I gave for, for Gulf Breeze for my effective coaching. My goal was to have all my effective coaching presentations credited toward the, co the club that I'm coaching. I was coaching Gulf Breeze, but that that club voted to disband. But when I spoke to the lady in education, she said that none of those speeches, I, I do have a level one verified, but none of those were, were, were recorded in Club Central, which means that I, all these speeches, my, the level one that I gave from what I gather, which she, from which she stated, the level one that I did, the level two, the level three that I completed, and the level twos that I'm working on can all be credited towards Hilltoppers. And I'll be sending David some information on that. So, but I, we, we, the, the, the level three can't be credited until the level twos are completed. But nevertheless, there'll be a level one, a level two, and a level three credit towards Hilltoppers. But I would, I would strongly suggest that we work on our, on our level presentations, particularly the level ones, level twos, and level threes. What Maurice, I noticed that you're a ACG and a, and a and uh, ALB? Uh, yes. Well, I think by, if I'm not mistaken, you are in line for DTM under the old system if you could do it before June 30th. Is, is that not correct? Yeah, that, that's correct. Yes, uh, I'm coaching, I'm a coach for Downtown Club and they've already achieved distinguished status and we did send we did send the app the application for the for the ALS kind of early, but they're putting it on hold until the beginning of June. And as soon as I get awarded that, then I'll send another application for a DTM, and, th and then get that done. Well, that's that's a feather in the cap for Hill for Hill Tarvers as yes. well as for Reese. Yes. Now, if it wasn't for COVID, my 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 journey would have ended because I, I was one task short, which was the coaching. Right. So we, 
I, I have to admit, I, I still have to get, to get clarification on some of these elements, specifically what we need. But I think we're, we're very close. But the thing is, if we continue to persevere and get these level achievements and, and increase our membership, I think we will we'll, we'll meet our distinguished we will be a distinguished club before the end of June. Yes. So we have to work together on it. Yeah. Uh, Luke, do you have any more? Do, would you have anything to add to that? Um, I don't, Wes. I, I appreciate you bringing it to my attention. I appreciate you, you know, wanting to meet. And uh, it was it was really good to meet you in person. Um, I do know that this goal is achievable. Uh, just like you say, Wes, if we if we work together and I'm going to look at um, probably going to enlist the help of David to kind of see where people are in their pathways, journey, see how many speeches people need to give, you know, including myself to kind of meet some goals and really look at that paper and maybe really line this out to where we can we can schedule some speeches out for everybody in the coming weeks and and you know, finish strong and hopefully meet this goal. So I'll get with David this week and we'll, we'll come up with a, a little better plan and try to incorporate, you know, people, you know, speaking uh, every week. And so hopefully we can meet, you know, meet some of these goals. David, are, are you familiar with the, with this, these club stats, the dashboards? Are, are, are you familiar with this? Have you seen this before? David? Oh, David, me. Um, uh, yes, I, I pulled it. I think when you had sent an email about it, I had pulled it up and looked at it. And but, but you're right. I think recently we haven't had a lot of progress in our club as far as giving speeches and moving up the different levels. So that's something we definitely could work on. Well, Wes, I, I appreciate the presentation tonight. I want to be mindful of everybody's time at 7.54. And um, and I appreciate you giving that education overview. I think it really kind of gave you know a good overview about what we talked about and what we want to accomplish going forward before the end of June. Um, if, if I don't give the speech, if I don't give my speech next week, it, it will definitely be the following week. Yes, no. Okay, perfect. Th thanks, Wes. And I'll take about 45 seconds here just to close us out. So David, great speech. I was focused and engaged the entire time. I, I really was. And to be honest, I took advice from your speech and I just really appreciated it. And I wish you could broadcast that speech out on the news and let the world hear it, let the politicians hear it. And uh, I think it would help with a lot of the hateful rhetoric, speech and tone and acts and different things. and. Uh, all in all, I, I just think it was great. Carrie, your table topics were eclectic and so much so I got nervous to raise my hand because I wasn't very creative and <laughs> I didn't know what to say. So I was happy to see other people raise their hands because they were challenging and that's what table topics is supposed to be. So I appreciate it. Uh, the Majid, great to see you. Great. I'm glad you're back. Um, I hope you're able to stay with us. I know everything's been busy for you, but it was, it was great to see you. I will keep everybody posted on the hybrid meeting. I'll send out a, a text about it. Hopefully when I talk to pastor this week, I'm gonna call him on Wednesday and keep in mind club officers. I would like to take a vote at the June 7th meeting and we can start to get the club officers, new club officers, in a roll going forward. So say about the middle of June on the 14th, I think would be the next meeting. They can slowly start to take over and have about two to three meetings before the beginning of July. So please uh, come uh, June 7th, have a list of officers or, or recommendations that you would like to see going forward. With that, does anybody have anything else to pass? I just want to add one thing about David's speech. It was lovely. It was the, when we got the report that it was 21 minutes, I was thinking, oh, that was a real short 21 minutes. So 
I really enjoyed that. I will tell you what I learned when I went to the advanced Toastmasters meeting is that you don't say your name. Every good keynote speaker has an introduction. So bring somebody along, preferably somebody who knows you well, but if not, pass this to any Joe Blow sitting there. Just say like, uh, hey, would you introduce me? Anybody and have it written down pass it to them and let them introduce you because that sets you apart when you have an introduction, someone to introduce you. So you should not ever have to say your name. Someone should say it for you. But your speech was amazing. And like I said, to be 21 minutes, it was a very quick 21 minutes. I was wanting more, like, wait, don't finish. Tell me more. So <laughs> I really enjoy that. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks, Olivia. I appreciate that. Does Thank anybody you. else have anything to pass? I just want to say thank you everyone for the kind words and it's always feel like I should prepare more for things. Sometimes I rush it when I'm preparing, but, but that was, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And it was, and thank you Wes for the evaluation and for being our coach. Now it's a, it was a good meeting and appreciate it. I'm your, go, I'm your coach for the duration. We can do this. We can be distinguished by June 30th. It's in the palm of my hand. It's a palm of our hands. All I have to do is just close our fingers. It's not that difficult. Thanks, Wes. Thanks, David. All right, guys. Well, everyone have a good, safe week, and we will see everybody back here uh, on the following Monday. Until then, you guys uh, take care. Bye-bye. Take care.